Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new video on spaceflight controls and today I wanted to show you some updates and some changes I made to my existing spaceflight control system um, and explain what I did here and why I did all that. Um, but anyway, this is kind of a demonstration of what's going on with it. You can see that my mouse cursor kind of dictates where my ship goes. If I go up, my ship turns up. If I go down, the ship will go down. And I have some improvements I need to make on this, but I figured I could at least get you the starter code. And if you want to adjust this and tweak this to however you want, you can do whatever you like with it. Um, but let's get into it and show you how all this works. So one of the biggest reasons I wanted to change the input system for this was because the old system was very limited. You either had roll or pitch and you didn't have yaw so it actually made it really difficult to get directly to the, the location that you were wanting to aim at um, and so eventually you could but you'd have to do a few steps to get there and to kind of talk about why that was frustrating we'll go into the code itself um, that we had before now i am showing two different sets of code one is for if you were doing transform rotation and the other was if you're doing rigid body forces so we only were getting our roll and pitch values from the horizontal and vertical axis we did not have a yaw value to capture them. So you could either do this two ways. You could either do transform rotation, which isn't physics based at all, and you would just do transform rotate, and then if you want to roll, you do vector 3.back times your roll value, the input, uh, which is usually non analog, it's just one or negative one um, or zero. Um, and then you have your speed with what you want it to roll times time by delta time. And then again, remember to use space.self when you're doing that in space, because if you do the world space, um, you're going to have all sorts of weird behaviors. Um, same thing with your pitch. So now with rigid body, it's very similar. You just add relative torque. You also use the same vector three dot back times your torque value. So how much force you want to apply times your roll or pitch input. So fairly straightforward. Um, and so what we're going to do next is actually going to be a lot more complicated because we're adding a lot more elements to it. So I'll kind of step through the concept first. So in the concept, um, the new controls, we were going to base our pitch and our roll, I'm sorry, our pitch and our yaw off of the cursor position. And then our horizontal input is actually going to control our roll value. So we also still want to have a slight roll for when we're just yawing because that's just a visual effect really. Whenever you're moving an aircraft left to right, we're used to seeing a little bit of roll when it yaws or turns to the right or left. So roll really is separate. When you roll, you're actually flipping the ship upside down and back, you know, right side up, things like that. But a the roll we're applying for our yaw is really just going to be like this, really slight so that we feel like, oh yeah, we are turning right, turning left. Um, it kind of, it feels more natural, even though um, we're not really doing a true roll. So the very first thing that I did was I made a new cursor because I didn't want to use just the mouse pointer. So what I did was I created this little pixel art um, cursor that looks like a targeting reticule and um, all I did was I created this empty game object UI in my scene I attached this script where it takes that texture and then that's gonna make it the cursor to show you what the code does we take that public texture that we added we drag that cursor in there um, that targeting reticule and on the start we're just saying cursor set cursor to target um, and then this one's just changing the size so really that's all you have to do to change a custom cursor and it's going to change that um, when you're playing the game you'll see that targeting reticule instead. Um, so the player script uh, is adding a bunch of things really so we're going to talk about start and update first. The first thing that I did was I am grabbing the model object, um, the model of the ship itself. I'm not using like the physics part of it or anything like that. I'm just using the model and I'm going to be adjusting that for I guess you could say it's animation but it's really not. I'm scripting the animation um, but I wouldn't call it that. I'm just changing how it rotates when we're doing that yaw roll. Um, so on the start, I'm getting my rigid body like I always am, but I'm also changing my model object to be, uh, I'm setting, I'm finding the model object on our object that we're controlling uh, so we can use that later. Um, and then in the update function, I'm doing a couple things. I'm doing our cursor position. We're finding that uh, so we can use it in other functions. And then our yaw roll is just a function that is based on where the cursor is, the ship's going to roll a little bit. And that's the animation aspect of it. It's not actually rolling the ship. It's just uh, saying if the cursor is a certain position, make our ship look like it's rolling. Um, so on the cursor positions, what I'm doing here is really a few steps. Uh, the first step is really just getting that position. 
The second line, this cursor position dot x minus equals screen dot width divided by two, that's actually saying the top, uh, we're saying get the cursor's position relative to the middle of the screen. So if you remember, on the screen, the top left is actually pixel zero, zero. And we don't want to find our cursor position relative to the top left of the screen. We want to find it relative to the center. So that's why we do this calculation. We cut our screen width in half and then we subtract it. And that's how we can find whether we're left or right of the center of the screen. The second one, this float cursor Y, this is an extra step I added. I probably could have put that in the first formula, but this cursor X and cursor Y is actually just finding the relative value. So it's gonna be either maximum plus one or maximum minus one for left and right and up and down. So um, it's gonna be, you know, it could be 0.5 or halfway up the screen or things like that. That's all we're doing is we're just finding the relative position from the center instead of an absolute value because Absolute values don't really help us at all, especially you know when you're working across multiple resolutions. So the last piece I do is I set this dead zone. You can change this. I'm, I probably ought to put like a variable so you can change this. But the dead zone is 0.5f. Now this isn't really honestly all that great because it's actually setting this dead zone um, to zero on the X or the Y if you're within a range. So there's actually like a crosshair dead zone um, that you can't use. And so I need to readjust this to be more of like a normalized vector. Um, but again, just throwing quick code together um, and playing around with it. So what we do once we're done is we return new vector two cursor X and minus cursor Y. Um, and the reason why I do that uh, is just because it's an adjustment for the way I was pro programming everything else. Um, and so some flaws here, some things I'm gonna have to work on, but generally speaking, this works. Um, so our player script, cursor angle and yaw roll. So cursor angle is now gonna find the angle of the cursor um, relative to um, our vector two, uh, basically our vector two uh, down, I think. So yeah, vector two dot down. So what we're trying to find is um, if the cursor is at a certain angle relative to like the center of the screen, our ship should roll to kind of match that. So, um, and I actually have this little divided by 4F here is just to make some tweaks and adjustments to it. There's a lot of tweaking and adjustments and improvements that need to be made here, but essentially this works as well. So we're just saying cursor adjust is our cursor position X, cursor position dot Y times 0.25F. Um, and then we're finding that angle. Um, and then, um, I'm also kind of just setting it to zero if it's also kind of like a, a little bit of a dead zone as well on this. Um, and there's probably a lot of refactoring I could do on this. But again, this this helps me get what I needed to accomplish where it rolls a little bit. So yaw roll then is where we actually call this cursor angle. So our vector three target roll value. So we're trying to find out how much should we roll. And that's going to be our new vector three and then zero and then 180, and this is because the model itself is actually flip 180. I don't want to change it. I just want to change um, change the roll value, not its back and forth value like it's around the, the Y axis. So I've also got a math F dot clamp. I don't want the Z axis um, to go more than 45 degrees. I want the ship to stay within 45 degrees on its roll value. So I've got this cursor angle dot Z minus 45 and 45. Um, and then lastly, we're saying model object transform dot local rotation equals quaternion Euler target roll value. So we're setting it to that roll value and it's immediate. So you don't necessarily know um, when you're when you're moving a mouse. It doesn't always like show up that it's like flipping. You'll see like little, you know, jitters here and there when you're doing that. Um, and that's usually if you're like moving around through the dead zone. But um, one of the things I tried to do was do a LERP. Uh, and for whatever reason, the lerp really freaks out when I throw it on this particular code. So I've got to figure that out um, to make it smooth. But again, this mostly works. So just see some improvements that need to be, need to be made to that. Um, and finally, our fixed update. So our fixed update is finally the part where we're going to do our roll, our pitch, our yaw, and our throttle. And you can see here, previously, our pitch was the vertical axis. So we've actually now changed it to the cursor position dot Y. So the further up our mouse goes, the more we'll pitch up. So we have an analog up and down instead of a one or you know z negative one or zero. Um, and then our yaw is the cursor position X. So we'll actually kind of slowly move left, slowly move right as we move the cursor left and right. Um, and then our throttle is just the you know WS key up and down arrows. Um, and then finally, we've got our we've got our 
add relative torque with our back, right? You know, our, we're using our torque values times our roll, our pitch, and our yaw. And that kind of accomplishes everything that we were needing for that. So anyway, that's everything that I had for today, guys. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. Um, if you want to see a few of the updates that I'm going to do to that, once they're completed, I'll show you that. I just couldn't get them done in time. Um, so uh, once I've kind of gotten everything smoothed out, I'll do another video with all those updates. But hopefully it, you found something useful here and you can use that for one of your projects. So I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.